the vast oceans are in constant motion, not just in the form of waves or tides. There are currents, deep underwater, moving massive amounts of water across the world. But what creates these current? Rivers move due to the action of gravity, but ocean currents are generated and influenced by a variety of factors like winds, tides, shape of the coastline shape, temperature changes and most importantly the rotation of the Earth. Far away from the coastline, strong winds blow, which were used by Captain Jack Sparrow to travel between different lands. These winds, blowing from east to west, swoop above the ocean surface, creating surface currents. You know that the Earth rotates from west to east. This creates something called the Coriolis effect. The westward flowing ocean currents get deflected and take a 90 degree turn to the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. These large looping surface currents are known as subtropical gyres. Important functions of these currents are to distribute the heat from the equatorial region towards the poles. Thus these ocean currents are responsible for the climate. The second type of currents originate due to changing temperatures. When the warm water from the equator travels towards the poles, it slowly cools off. As it approaches the Arctic region, the temperature drops below freezing, and the water turns into ice. Ice made from ocean water leaves the salt behind and a freshwater ice sheet is formed. The more these ice sheets form, the saltier the water becomes which is below the sheet, making the water more dense. The concentrated saline water sinks below and creates a vacuum at the top, which is filled in by new ocean currents coming from the equator. This creates a deep ocean current loop, called the global conveyor belt. This system, also known as the thermohaline circulation, is a connection of deep and surface currents which circulate water around the globe. But how does all this concern us? Well before we answer that let's not forget that the surface of the Earth is 71% water, and the water absorbs twice as much energy from the Sun, compared to land. Like we said earlier, ocean currents distribute heat. But due to the confinement of oceans by the land masses, the heat is channeled into specific zones only. The sheer mass of the ocean gives it a huge capacity to absorb heat. This prevents sudden change in climate or temperature due to the heat of the Sun. It basically acts like a buffer and dampens the temperature fluctuations. Oceans form a herbiciate for wide variety of species, from both the plant and the animal kingdom. These species have adapted to conditions prevailing for the past thousand years. Changes in current circulation pattern, temperature, ocean surface topography, might lead to their extinction. There are certain species which cannot move on their own and depend on ocean currents for relocation. Plants at the seafloor rely on these currents to carry their gametes from one location to the other, where they can fertilize and form new plants. We should treat the oceans as our friend and not take advantage of what it has to offer. Overfishing, noise pollution caused due to offshore drilling is creating a huge impact in the upcoming future. The governments of the nations have come together to prevent further damage to nature. Banning of microplastic beads, which are hard to filter out of the ocean, creating marine protected areas and restoring ocean habitats have shown significant progress in reversing the harm already done. And we are sure, our future generations will still get to enjoy the seas and oceans as we are doing now. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to Explified. See you in the next one.